you might have observed that the shape of the wing is not in the form of a circle or something. Instead they have a unique shape with different cross sections. It is known as aerofoil. Aerofoil is the shape of the wing which helps in providing lift. They have different cross sections depending on the type of aircraft. But in every aerofoil, the upper surface of the wing has a greater curvature than the lower surface. So, let's know how it works. The air flowing over the wing surface must reach the trailing edge at the same time as the air flowing below it. And this happens when air traveling over the wing surface moves with high velocity, since the upper surface has greater curvature. According to the Bernoulli theorem, the high velocity flow of wind causes low pressure over the wing, meanwhile the pressure below the wing is high. This pressure difference pushes the wing up, from high pressure region to low pressure region, and is responsible for lift generation. The airfoil is not symmetric in nature. If we draw a straight line from leading edge to trailing edge, it is known as cord line. And a curve that divides the upper and lower airfoil into equal halves is known as mean camber line. The area enclosed between the cord line and camber line is known as camber. And lift is directly proportional to camber. If mean camber line coincides with cord line, lift cannot be generated. These points are to be considered for lift generation. When the cord line is below mean camber line, positive lift will be generated. Similarly, when cord line is above mean camber line, negative lift is generated. To explain in simple with the operation of aileron control. When left aileron is operated down, the cord line is below the mean camber line. This results in positive lift in left wing. Meanwhile when the right aileron is operated up, the cord line is above the mean camber line, this results in negative lift in right wing. Therefore, the aircraft rolls towards right. There are different types of aerofoils based on their geometry. But how are they classified? Let's take a look. They are classified based on the NACA aerofoil series. NACA stands for National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, formed in 1915, to supervise and direct the study of flight travel. In the 1929, Sir Langley has developed this system of identifying aerofoil based on their cross-section. But why do we need to study them? Before that we need to see lift equation. The lift equation is given as L equals C, L multiplied by 1 half rho V square into S. Where rho is density, V is velocity, S is wing surface area. And C, L is the coefficient of lift. Coefficient of lift is different for different wing surfaces. It mainly depends on angle of attack and the geometry of aerofoil. Angle of attack is the angle made by cord line with the relative airflow. So, we need to consider the aerofoil cross section for generating lift. Let's know how these are classified. Basic NACA aerofoil series contain four digits. Each digit represents a specific coordinate to identify the location of leading edge, trailing edge, thickness, cord length and camber. Here all the dimensions are given in terms of percentage compared with cord length. Let's take an example of NACA 2412. The first digit 2 indicates that the aerofoil has camber of 2%. This means, the maximum distance between cord line and camber line is 2% of its cord length. The second digit, 4 indicates the location or position of that camber. That is, 40% of cord length from leading edge. The third and fourth digit indicates the thickness of aerofoil, here 12% of cord length is the thickness. So, in this video we have learned some basics of aerofoil. Thanks for watching, please like, share, comment and do subscribe Aviation Alphabet for more videos related to aviation.